What's going on, everybody? Welcome, Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio. Today's episode. Now, bear with me. We're talking about our latest event coming up in 2022, All In Weekend. But it's not just going to be about that. I think if you've listened to other episodes we've done where we talk about a thing that we're doing, mm-hmm. we try to provide as much value around that for even. It's not a commercial. There, I could just leave it at that. It's not a commercial. Hopefully you trust me enough to know that it's not going to be a commercial. Well, this one is in video, which means if you're watching, you see me referring to notes, which is not a thing that happens very often. You get to peek behind the curtain a little bit. And if this happens to be your first episode, I'm Jeremy Lesniak, joined by my good friend, co-host Andrew Adams. How are you, Andrew? I'm great. I'm doing well. Glad to hear it. And what do we do at Whistlekick? Well, everything we do is in support of the traditional martial arts. Head on over to whistlekick.com. Check out all the things that we're doing. There's a ton of stuff we do. If the only thing you ever interact with is this show, you're missing out. There's so much stuff. It's insane. It, and how do I know it's insane? Because I'm involved in most of it. And it, there's a reason I start work at 630 every day. If you want to check out more just on the show, if you're like all in on this show, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And if you want to support us, two biggest things you can do, make a purchase at whistlekick.com using the code PODCAST15 or the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. And Patreon is P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. You don't have your sign. I know. I usually hold up a sign sometimes. But if you want the full list of everything you can do to support us in our mission to support the traditional martial arts, whistlekick.com slash family. And if you check that out once in a while, you'll see some some kind of surprise Easter eggy yeah. sort of things that we drop in there. All right. Did I, I think I got everything. Yeah. Bam. All right. Are you Emerald? Yeah. Bam. Bam. <laughs> All in weekend. All in weekend. Let's start with the history of mm-hmm. how it came to be. Sure. Sure. And then let's talk about what it is. Mm-hmm. And as we go, I want you to help me make sure that I'm talking about the, the stuff around it, the why, the, the, why. Thing, the things yeah. that make it not a commercial. Like I'm yeah. going to do my best, but you know. And and I would say that we will talk about our event, but yeah. we're going to be talking about weekend or week long training sessions in general, like yeah. benefits of as well. So yeah, if if you remember, there's an older episode. I don't remember what episode number it is about destination training events. This is kind of the extension of that. This is our thoughts, my thoughts on that years later. Okay. So years ago, 2016, Mm -hmm. we were going to have what at the time is going to be called Whistle Kick Weekend. Not enough people signed up. The economics didn't work. We had to pull the plug. In pulling the plug, it became what we now call free training day. Yep. The whole idea behind Whistle Cake Weekend was let's get people together. Let's give them a place to sleep. Let's take care of the food. Let's facilitate the training and construct a environment where you're guaranteed to have a lot of great things happening because you're managing those things. Mm-hmm. But leave enough space that amazing things can happen organically. Yeah. The initial vision behind Whistlekick Weekend, the main piece was all the different instructors. Yeah. That has become the hallmark of free training. Yeah. That mm-hmm. is not what's going to happen in all in weekend. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I wanted to make wanted to make sure that, and we wanted to make sure when we started talking about this. What, all in weekend was not just going to be more free training day. Yeah. Because if you've been to free training day, you can't do that for two days. You're, yeah. Your brain will explode. It's not going to work. There's a, a, like we're stretching the limits by having seven sessions as it is yeah. just with what we're doing. So what are we doing? Free training day is about conveying information and building camaraderie. Mm-hmm. Would, would you agree? Oh, ab- ab- absolutely. I, uh, I've only had the pleasure of going twice to two free training days, 2019 and 21. Um, I'm one of two people who've been to all of them. Uh, yeah, okay. 
I'm sorry, I'm not. Um, and one of the biggest takeaways from the first one I went to was the amount of people that I met and had genuine fun and learn learning experiences with. Yeah. Um, it was huge for me. That was probably the biggest takeaway from 2019. Yeah. Um, you know, and some of the people that I had met, I'm going to put in quotes for those that are just listening, met online, but had never met in person yeah. and finally getting to see them in person and talk to them and hugs you know, and handshakes. Yeah. And it was, it was great. Training with. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, I came home that night incredibly sore <laughs> and uh, you know, and I, I'm remembering this because it came up in my Facebook memories from yeah. that year. You know, I came home, I sat down, I had a big cup of tea and, uh, you know, my, my meal. And I just sat there and wrote an incredibly lengthy review of the day of like all the classes I took and all the people that I met and, you know, tons of pictures that I had taken. And it just was such a thing for me that I couldn't imagine not going again. It was impactful. Absolutely. And that's what most people say about pre-training is that it is impactful. And when you and I started putting together the pieces, because we suspected leading up to free training day that it was time to launch this. Yeah. You know, we put a lot of the pieces in place for, for what we are now calling all in weekend. At the time we didn't have a name yeah. for it when we started talking about it. I said, you know, here's this thing I tried to do that didn't work, but I think the time is right. Mm -hmm. And we put it together in a way that if we needed to pull the plug, we could pull the plug, yeah. you know, without being out a whole bunch of money. But the part that I wanted to keep was the impact. Mm -hmm. And I think that the format we've developed does that. And I think the best way to describe it is we take everything that's good about free training day. Mm -hmm. And it's as if you, you take one session, like we've all, whether or not you've been to free training day, if you've been to any kind of martial arts event, training seminar, tra something. seminar, uh, um, maybe you're part of an organization, you get a group together, people mm -hmm. you don't typically train with. When you bring in new blood or fresh meat, as some people <laughs> like to call it, there's this really interesting thing that happens in the energy of the group, if people are on the same page and they're there for good reasons, not even necessarily the same reasons, but good reasons, some, some really magical stuff happens. And you've probably been part of groups where you said, I don't want this group to break up. I want, we've got this magic with this mm -hmm. group, this 20 or 40 or 60 people, however many it is, and we're just starting to explore those inter dynamic inter interpersonal dynamics isn't the right word, but yeah. the 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 way we're training together is yielding results benefit for everyone involved through those connections. Yeah. What if we could continue that? Now we're never going to take free training day and say, you know what, team one like is this random group of people and yeah. you have to go through the same like we're not going to do that. But that's kind of what's going on with all in weekend because it's limited to forty people that's and it. that includes us. Like the 40 includes us. Like it's it's not a big number of people. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna have not six, seven hours or 45 minutes with a group. You're gonna have two days of a group, a weekend with a group. Mm -hmm. Yep. And most of us as adults don't get to spend time with other adults in that capacity. That are as passionate about what you are. For that length of time. Most of the time when adults do a thing for a weekend, they're taking care of kids or they're worrying about rooms or they're worrying about food. They're yep. worrying mm. and we've removed the worry. Yep. So what's left? Martial arts in all the ways that you can define that. Mm -hmm. Now, why do I think it's important for us to talk about this and make this an episode? Now, yeah, full disclosure, we want people to come. We're going to tell you about it because we hope that incentivizes or, or, uh, inspires, there we go, some of you to attend this event. Uh, by the way, last weekend of April, you can find all of us on kick.com. But one of the things I've learned over the years is that we, I, we, approach things that we do differently than most. 
And we've had people come up to us after free training day saying, I've done things like this, but it was nothing like this. Next time I do mine, I'm going to do boom, 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 boom. Go for it. Take our best ideas and implement them. That's a good thing. Remember our mission. It's not to make the best free training day. It's to help grow and support martial arts. So if we do a cool thing and other people learn from it and their things get cooler, like we're all winning. It's a win-win. Yeah, that's the goal. So when we take all in weekend, which is hyper focused on fostering the culture, mm -hmm. but when this airs, it'll be a, what, six weeks or so that we did yeah. the episode on culture. Yep. Yep. This, this is about culture plus training. Yeah. And it's culture first. Cause if we get the culture, right. The training will be amazing. Yeah. You well, can have good training without culture. Absolutely. You know, and I think we at whistle kick has, worked really hard at putting forth an ethos of style agnostic, um, no ego, and just training for the purpose of training and learning. And I think that one of the two biggest, I say one of the two biggest uh, takeaways that I heard from people leaving free training day, number one that I heard, and you may have heard differently, but was that they loved that aspect, that they're, it didn't matter what style they came from and that there was no ego, that everybody was there to train. The fact that all the instructors took classes as well. So that was the one takeaway. And the second was that every single person I talked to, although they were dead tired at the end of the day, wished that it had been more. Yeah. They wish they had had a, a more of an event. Yeah. We know, and, and, if, and if maybe you're new to martial arts or maybe you participate, own, run a school, where culture is not part of the conversation. So you may not be experienced with this. The, the tighter a group gets, the more they trust each other. The more they trust each other, the more risks they're willing to take with each other. Mm. If I just meet you, like if we just met and we started sparring, I'm going to be holding back. Yeah, I'm going to be holding back even from that point where I know I can safely go because I don't know how you're going to react if I you know, slip that 16th of an inch and that, that, you know, strike to the chest, maybe it was a little, Oh yeah. You know, even though it doesn't hurt your leg, no, wait a second. That was harder than it needed to be. Right. Yeah. So, or harder than I expected it. Would sure. Be. So we're, we're going to kind of feel each other out. That happens in any group of new people. Whereas right now you just try and take that off. I would just, yeah, I would just stab you with my toenail. <laughs> because we are aware of this, what we are constructing, which by the way, we're not sharing the syllabus. This is not going to be, here's the itinerary of events, which is internally going to be incredibly detailed mm -hmm. because it needs to be to achieve the goals. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not sharing that because that's not what you need to know. But what I would share is because I mentioned one of the ethos is style agnostic and no ego. Yes. I, I feel confident saying that if you, if you, the attendees that come are not going to learn, pick a style. Boxing. They're this not going to learn karate weekend. A boxing weekend. Yeah, they're not going to learn, uh, you know, wadoru karate for th for three days. It's yeah. not going to be that. And there, it's not going to be jujitsu for three days. Nor is it going to be entirely physical. Okay, absolutely, it's going to be a multitude of different things, different kinds of training, different types of training. Um, we are not leaning in one direction for any one. Thing. We're trying. We're trying to stay broad on this, and Pur purposefully, purposefully. Mm -hmm. Because one of the goals is that people are taken outside of their comfort zone, at least some of the time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what makes that easier? Recognizing that by fostering trust between the attendees, they will be more likely to feel comfortable stepping out of their comfort zone and supporting others as they also do so. It is unlikely that we're going to have any one thing that we do where everybody's out of their comfort zone. We're, we're going to try on some of them. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And but it, you know, we're not talking about we're going to make you walk on fire. We're not going to walk on fire. That would be cool though. But no, no. If you want to walk on fire, we can all cheer you on. Okay. Okay. But we're working from from some end goals. And when I think about anything that we do at Whistle Kick, we start with the end goal. What is the result that we are striving for? When we talk about this episode, we didn't take notes, but we said, okay, what is the goal? What do we want people to come away with this episode? Mm -hmm. 
knowing, thinking. And we do that with every episode that we record. When we put together a book, when we put together the training programs, it's all working backwards from what is the goal. So that that's a hard piece of advice that I want to offer to everyone, no matter what you're putting together, whether it's martial arts or not, whether it's a training event or a testing or whatever, work backwards. What is the goal? How do you define the success of that thing? And make sure everything supports that success. I don't think people are going to come away from this with the first thing that they talk about being, I'm a better kicker. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we won't have kicking? No. No. There will probably be some kicking at some point. Safe to assume. They're probably not going to come away from this going, I feel like I'm so much more flexible and I know all the things I need to know to be more flexible now. But that doesn't mean there won't be flexibility. Yep. Yep. Exactly. What we are expecting, my goal, and and we're on the same page on this, people will come away saying, This was a powerful and transformational experience. I'm even more in on martial arts, hence the title, All In Weekend. And I'm inspired to continue training, hopefully even more so, harder, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait for next year. Yeah, with an an increased vigor for wanting to do it. Um, And learning new stuff. You know, I, 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 some of the people that are attending, I've, I've talked to and they are, they feel stagnant is not the right word, but they have been learning the same thing for a long time. And they're excited to be able to get outside of what they already know and learn something new. Free training days, free training day is great for that, but it's in small blocks. This is going to be a larger version of those classes, right? Learning more stuff. And free training day is more on the physical side. Yeah. It's about skills. It's about concepts. Yeah. This is, when we talk about martial arts, if you pay any attention to whistle kick and what we put out, you know that I'm very passionate about the personal growth aspect of martial arts. I I believe it is the the heart of martial arts. We're going to have elements of that. Yeah. You know what? There's going to be times where we're talking in groups. Mm -hmm. About what? I'm not going to tell you. In part because we don't know yet. Because we haven't solidified everything. Yeah. Because with 40 attendees total, we get to customize this a bit. We can dig in and and know, okay, this is what this person does. This is what this person does. Because we are hell-bent on making sure that that goal is achieved. And when you've got months to prepare, we're going to take that time and we're going to crush it. Yeah. Because we want people to want to come back. And we, you know, the people that are going to attend, we hope that they do trust us to do that i would assume that they do you know and and i think one of the best testaments to that is we announced this at free training day yep and we had already sold multiple spots we sold one in the first 10 minutes yeah somebody stepped out of their free training day session and was doing it on their phone yeah uh and i think that says a lot for sure so that that was a, a lot about the event so let's Let's kind of branch out a little bit. Gave you a bit on setting that goal Mm -hmm. and working backwards. We talked about culture. If you missed the episode on culture in a martial arts school and the importance thereof, go back and check that one out because that culture, it's not just school. It's, it's the event. It it is, Mm -hmm. it is something. Remember it happens whether you want it to or not, it's there. And if you ignore it, you don't get to control it. If you're aware of it, you get to maybe not control it, but influence it. And I think that's important. Food. Food. You know, it could be easy to skip over and maybe sounds a little cheesy. That pun was not intended, but works really well. (laughs) People always appreciate when there is good food at an event. And again, going back to what we said towards the beginning, the fact that we are providing food. And and, and obviously we're talking about our all-in weekend, but any event – When you take out the things you have to worry about, it makes the event itself something you can focus more on as an attendee. And so that's something people don't have to worry about. Right. And BT Dubs, we have like an actual chef doing the food for the weekend. This is not, this is not like, oh, we're going to give you hot dogs and hamburgers. (laughs) Six, eight meal, however many meals it is, right? 
no, this is like legit food. Like the 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 second biggest line item behind lodging is food. Oh, absolutely. And we are very, you know, I'll peek, well, I'll peek behind the curtain a little bit more for the for the audience. Like we're very lucky that the person that's doing the food, the, the chef, is a personal friend of mine. One You've of, had his food. One of my best friends. I eat at his house all the time. Uh, like he's doing us a favor, to be honest. Like yeah. we we are lucking out on our food because he's helping us out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's kind of the, the fun thing. And, you know, that's another, another piece when we put this together and when you think of a successful event, the best events you go to, they leverage the people that are part of that community. So, you know, you think about like free training day, why did we get free training day where it was and all the wonderful things we could have because of you. Yeah. Because you're kind of people I knew. Because, yeah. yeah. And I think quite often when people put things together, they, don't ask for help. They suffer from that. I'm getting better. Yeah. And they don't consider the resources available to them that they can leverage easily. If you're a martial art school owner, instructor, even just someone who's been around martial arts a while, you probably know at least half a dozen people. If you said, hey, I'm trying to put this thing on. Can you help? They'll say, yeah, what do you want me to do? Sure. Absolutely. And don't be afraid to ask for that help. If you're trying to add food to your event, you're like, I can't handle the food. Maybe somebody would help put together the food. Maybe you put out an email to whomever and you say, hey, does somebody know somebody that's a really good cook and would like to make a few extra bucks? Yeah. When we did our tournament mm -hmm. that was <clears throat> the predecessor to the non first all in weekend, yep, which I was not at, which you were not at, but the chef at all in weekend his wife was at because the world is small, especially yep. the martial arts world. I had food trucks outside and there were plenty of things that did not go well about that event. Cause it was my first one and I bit off way more than I could chew, but people came away saying, you know what? I appreciated that you had good food. Nice. Good food will change everything. <laughs> people will put up with a lot for good food and this is the first time I'm realizing this. Like, even if we don't crush it, they'll leave going, the food was amazing. I, I was about to say, if if nothing else, uh, the cost of the event. Oh, for sure. You could come just for the food and, okay. and sit By down way, and not do any of the training. The whole weekend's 200 bucks. Yeah, it's insane. You, you get you get your lodging. No, it's not in a, it's not in a private hotel. By design. I, I would but want it's that. nice. Yeah, no, no, but... Part of the benefit of doing a seminar like this, and again, not just all in weekend, there are lots of these types of events all over the world. One of the benefits of doing this type of event is the growth of the group mm -hmm. as a group mm -hmm. that you're going to connect and know people. Um, the chef's wife who was at your tournament, uh, martial artist, she got her black belt when I got my um, first degree in, in the karate I'm studying now. Mm -hmm. She has been to the Jesse Yen camp, Karate Nerd Experience. Mm -hmm. She met so many people at that event. Yeah. And because she and I are friends, when I was looking for more guests on the show, four of our last, you know, 25 or 40 guests are connections that she made yeah. from that event. Um, because they're more passionate martial artists yeah. and the people that you meet at these types of events can very, very easily turn into lifelong friends. Yeah. And that's an added benefit that many people don't see in this type of residential program. Yeah. So you should have events. You should make them fun. You should be intentional about the culture. Mm -hmm. You should provide tasty food. <laughs> and you should recognize that if you leave space for good things to happen and you are fostering culture the right way and bringing good people, things that you never could have imagined will happen. Positive, powerful, life-changing things. And if you're someone looking to grow, build a school, that's the kind of stuff you need people saying. This, this thing that I did or attending this school or whatever changed my life. 
what what better what better thing can people say? Absolutely. And that's what we're shooting for here. We are shooting for a life changing weekend. So, with all that being said, as of this recording, it is more than half sold. The promotion on this, not the promotion, the the adoption on this has gone better than we expected. Okay. Yep. Here we are. We're releasing this early January. We're recording at the end of December. 40 slots total, 38, I guess, because you know, we're in there. And I think because we sold one while we recorded the last episode, <laughs> I think we're down as of right now to like 17 I think slots. So. Yeah. So if you're listening to or watching this and you're thinking, huh, maybe I should try to do this. I think I'm interested. Don't wait. Yeah. Do not wait. The, the, the only part that sucks about this event is everyone who wants to come will not be able to attend. That's very true. Yep. Sorry. A little bit not sorry, but sorry. But that's part of what makes it special is that it's unique. And, you know, here's another behind the curtain. If this goes well, we will consider doing others. Absolutely. In, in other locations. Yeah. Right. Uh, or, or even the same location if there's enough yeah, interest. We can, we can do it anywhere. Session. That's true. Yeah. That's true. It's, you know, we're, we're building, we're building something that we both believe in that we think is going to be really, it's something we're both going to be proud of, I, yeah. I think is, is the best way to put it. So if you have questions, check out the event at whistlekick.com. If there are questions there, that, if you have questions after reading that, that are still not answered, reach out. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. You know, I've been circling Andrew in on, on all this stuff. We've been talking about it three days a week. <laughs> At this point, <laughs> it'll much. go up to six, I'm sure, at some point. Um, but we want to make sure that the right people get there, the people that, that are all in on this idea. And part of that is being very open about what we can be open about. Okay. And, you know, I would also say we will not be the only instructors there. Nope. There will be other people instructing. We're not going to yeah. tell you who. Nope. But it's not going to be just us, which so, helps. Which helps lend to that learning lots of different mm -hmm. things. And I don't know that we would ever pin attendance on the instructors. Yeah, agreed. Because that's we're not, not gonna hang out the person and be like, come train with, I don't know, Bruce Lee. Obviously not, but let's pretend, right? Yeah. We would not say all in weekend featuring Bruce Lee, because that's not that's not gonna get the right people. Mm. That's not the message we're trying to convey. Yeah. yeah. So will there be amazing people there? Yes. Will you have heard of them? Maybe. If you know our names, well, you know at least two people. <laughs> Thank you for indulging us. Hopefully you did find some value in this, even if attendance is not on your radar. If there are aspects to what we talked about that you want us to go deeper on, because I'm sure we could, I mean, we threw a ton of stuff out there. Yeah. If it's, if it's little stuff, reach out. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll write you back. If it's big enough, we'll do another episode or six. I mean, we're, we're all about sharing this information because if someone takes this idea, runs with it, and they see success with it, then maybe we'll show up and we'll steal your ideas. Everybody wins. I'm going to get my notes. <laughs> Check out the show notes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And if you're up for supporting what we do, aside from attending all in weekend, you've got a bunch of options. You could leave a review, you could buy a book on Amazon, or maybe help out with the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. And, you know, if you want to bring me to your school for a seminar, I'd love to join you. You, know, you can reach out. We'll find a way. Absolutely. We're booking seminars through 2022, and the dates are going fast. It's kind of insane, and I'm a little bit scared. Uh, don't forget the code podcast15 to get 15% off anything in the store. If you have guest suggestions, let me know. Social media, it's at Whistlekick. My email, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. day.